Good morning. Grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, friends. It's so good to see you all, whether here in sanctuary or online. Friends, we invite you to stand as you are able and join us in our call to worship. Could I get the call to worship on the screen, please? How's everyone doing today? Good. Good. Are you enjoying all of this wonderful pollen in the air? My nose, my sinuses. All right, friends, would you join us in the call to worship? Jesus said, abide in me and I will abide in you. Lord, graft us on to the vine that we may bear fruit of grace so our lives may be abundant and full of life. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, join us in our first song. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Good morning. I don't have the words. Can we have the words on the screen, please? Jeffrey? We are. Here we go. Hang on in the garden. Here they come. Here we go. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joys we share as we tarry there none other has ever Stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joys we share as we carry there, none other has ever known. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day and for visitors and newcomers and for those coming back to our church. Lord, just keep us in your ever mindful presence. Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful day and beautiful music and gathering of, of beautiful family. I searched the world, but he couldn't follow me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. You came along, put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. 
there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. Lord, you see them all, and you still call me friend. Cause God of the mountain is God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace will find me again. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You turn beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who into armies you turn seas into highways you're the only one who can you're the only one who can oh, there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing nothing is better Highways, you're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Amen. Thank you, Lord Joe. Amen to that. Better get turned on here. Okay, today we are reading from the Old Testament. It's Acts 8, 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. 
Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at the Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Now we'll have the chancel choir.
We'll now have the New Testament reading. This comes from 1 John 4, 7 to 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that if we live in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God and God lives in him and he in God, and so we know and rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of just judgment. Because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. God's word for God's people. We'll now have children's time. All the kids come up. Come on forward. Smile around at the people and see how many people are smiling at you. 
God makes us very happy, and smile tells it all. So try to remember to smile, okay? We'll have a little prayer. If you fold your hands, please. Jesus, bless the children today and always. Give them the strength and the courage to follow your blessings. And we pray for them today and us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have a little treat for you. And I thought I was buying. Remember those little treats that you have? They say smiles on them. Well, I picked up the wrong box. So I just have Welsh's fruit stick. Do you think that'll mean, do you think that'll mean the smile of the time you eat one or see anybody today? Okay. Thank you so much for coming out. We have You get one too. And you might have to share. <laughs> you. Make sure you eat that candy during service, okay? <laughs> get you all hyped up. Friends, uh, thank you, Sharon. Friends, um, now is the time for offering, a moment where we remember how good God is, all of the things that God has given us to rejoice over, to smile over. Friends, if you haven't given your offering yet as you walked in, uh, feel free to put it in the boxes on your way out. But in this moment, we invite you to listen to uh, the wonderful music that's being provided and to reflect on the ways that God has blessed you both in the past, both right now, and the ways that God has promised to bless you and keep you. Friends, we invite you to take this as a moment of reflection. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the ways that you continue to bless us. We thank you for the ways that you continue to make this world spin, for our tables to have food, for roofs to be over our heads. God, may your mercy and your grace, may your providence, may all the things that you use to keep us going be within our lives. May your love be within our hearts. God, may we be thankful and grateful for the ways that you continue to be with us. And Lord, may that thanksgiving and that gratitude, may we be generous because of it. And may we bless every single person that we meet. Through Christ our Lord, we pray all of these things. Amen. So friends, we invite you to stand as you are able and raise your voices as well as we praise God through our doxology. So with the confidence of those who have been redeemed, we invite you to pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of John chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. This is the gospel according to John. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my, mo- in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. The good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir a little bit today. You, you have, or at least used to have, orchards down here in southwest Iowa, right? Please nod your heads, yes. Please, good. So you know a little bit about what it means to grow fruit on trees, right? You know that process, you know how much work it takes, how long it takes to get that orchard to the place where it needs to be to produce the kind of fruit that sells and tastes well. But I don't know if anyone ever showed you or told you how to get new fruit trees. How many of you have had an apple in the last week? You've all had an apple. How many many seeds does an apple have? It's five, isn't it? If I'm wrong, let me know next Sunday. I'd love, to, I'd love to know that. But each of those seeds, the interesting thing about apple seeds is, you know how seeds work, right? You grow the plant. The plant dies. You take the seed. You put it in the ground. It might need to germinate somehow. It, it might need to go through a cold season. But you put it in the ground, and then eventually what sprouts? Another one of those plants. You do this with corn, corn grows. You do this with wheat, wheat grows, right? You do this with an apple, what happens? An apple tree grows. I I promise, that wasn't a trick question. But do you know what's interesting about an apple tree? See, each of those seeds, if you plant them, they get you a different kind of apple. Did you know that? If you have a Honeycrisp apple with seeds that can be planted and germinate, if you plant that Honeycrisp apple seed, will you get a Honeycrisp? Shake your heads, no. If you plant a Red Delicious, will you get a Red Delicious? Shake your heads, no. If you plant a Granny Smith, what will you get? 
not a Granny Smith. And it's fascinated me that apple seeds, much like people, only resemble their parents. That in some ways they are completely different trees. So do you know how you get new Granny Smith apple trees? See, it's fascinating. And it's incredible that we as people have learned how to do this. So what you do is you take a new branch from a tree that's already producing good fruit. You take it and you cut it off. Then you cut a little notch at the bottom and then you go to the tree that you want to produce these granny apple, granny smith apples. And you cut another little notch into that tree and you take that branch And remember, you've got the branch exposed now on the bottom, and you slide that branch into the notch. This is called grafting. And then you wrap it so that nothing attacks that bit where it's grafted to, and then what happens? The tree fuses together, and then all of a sudden, this other apple tree that, who knows what apple it would have been producing, but this other apple tree starts to produce Granny Smith apples. That blows my mind, that people were smart enough to figure out how to do this. And it's not just apple trees either. Did you know grapes are kind of the same way, that their seeds also produce different varieties? Now, you might be asking yourself, other than the fact of, well, is this the only reason we do this? Well, we'll see A little bit of research that I did. Grapes are different in that you can take that branch, stick it right in the ground, and it'll grow roots. Remember I've told you, my thumbs, they're not green, are they? I'm really good at killing plants. It's one of my talents, let me tell you. But I've finally found a plant that I can't kill. It's a philodendron. I think that's what it is anyway, right? You know those viney plants that you could put them in water and they'll grow roots and there's no, I mean, they keep going forever and ever. And I'm pretty sure this philodendron that I'm trying to keep alive was from my wife's mother's mother. Hardy plants. But what's fascinating is there are other reasons to graft these roots, these branches onto other plants vines or other stumps. One of the reasons that they do this with grapes is you want a very sweet grape if you're just going to eat it. But if you're going to turn it into wine, you want it to be a very specific taste and flavor, don't you? But sometimes those branches aren't necessarily the hardiest of branches and they might find themselves getting diseased or failing or what have you. And so what you do is you grow roots, you have a vine, you have a stock that is hardy, that can resist disease, that can get all of the water and moisture out of the soil so that it can help these branches grow and grow well and produce fruit and produce it abundantly. This is what Christ is talking about. This is the imagery that Christ is using, and I am very blessed that you've all grown up around here, around orchards, around an agricultural way of life, so that this hopefully resonates. But if it doesn't, and that's okay, then let's pick apart what Christ might be trying to get at. How many of you have grown up in the church? Not everyone. That's okay. You know, I didn't start growing up in the church until I was about five years old when my parents decided, ah, it's probably time to get the kid baptized. But it's interesting to me the ways and the places that we grow up. How many of you have grown up here in southwest Iowa your whole lives? Did you travel? Have you been to other places? Have you known what other people talk like? I'm reminded that my accent is a little bit northern, that sometimes down here you say yup, and apparently I say yep. You can't beat it out of me, I guess. But, But I bring this up because this is the stock that we are from. 
right? This is where we have grown up. And it influences us. It, it teaches us who we are. It helps us shape how we view the world, how we make sense of all of the craziness that goes around us in our lives. And that's a good and beautiful thing. But Christ is coming to his disciples because they are the same way. They have grown up knowing and living and loving and talking and doing all of the wonderful things that we do as people. They grew up in a very specific time and place. But Christ is coming in and saying, there's something more to life. There's something deeper, already here, already present. But there's something that is happening and it's happening now. See, Christ comes to his disciples and says, has a bunch of these I am statements. You find them in John. It, it's to help us understand who God is, what God is doing, how God acts with each of us. So Christ says things like, I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the vine. Because it teaches us something very specific about who Christ is. And I promise, this will have some relevance in our lives, so stick with me. Remember that bit about the vines? Remember that bit about, yeah, certainly, we, we want new Granny Smith apples, right? But remember that bit about why you might take a fragile little branch and graft it onto a hardy vine. See, I think sometimes we forget that in many ways, this is what God is doing in our lives. Christ says, I am the true vine and my father's the gardener. He cuts off the dead branches, puts the branches of life on, prunes them so that they might bear fruit. It helps teach them how to be disciples, how to be people with the love of God in their hearts that we might bear fruit. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If someone remains in me and I in them, they will bear much fruit. And apart from Christ, well, you get the picture. See, in many ways, what Christ is doing, what Christ is acting as, is that source of life is that bulwark against all of the things that might be happening in our lives that are conspiring to destroy us. And I don't want to get too dramatic. I, I really don't. I know preachers are oftentimes, and you're going to have to forgive us for that. But how many of you, I don't know, from the time you first became conscious of of life. How, would you say life has been easy or life has been difficult? Would you say it's gone completely according to your plan or you've had to make some detours? Would you say that it's been a cakewalk or that it's actually been some work? I think most of us understand this. That life is difficult at times. It's not necessarily, there are many things that aren't necessarily a guarantee. So for Christ to come and say, I am the vine. I am the one that brings life and brings it abundantly. I'm the one where once you are grafted onto me, you can lay your burdens down. See, I think sometimes we get so used to carrying those burdens, so used to fighting all of the things in our lives that it's hard to acknowledge, it's hard to admit that, yes, actually, what would happen? What would happen if I said yes? Christ, here are all of my disappointments. Jesus, here are all the things I'm struggling with. God, take this burden from me so that I might live and live abundantly. Live with things like love and joy and life. 
the very things that Christ says and, and lifts up in this discourse here to his disciples saying that if you are in me, then I am in you. And as the Apostle Paul says later on in Romans, and there's nothing that can separate that love. There's nothing that can cut that root. So friends, I think this is the question. This is the vision. This is the good news that there is hope. That no matter what life throws at you or at us or at anyone, that Christ is the bulwark. That Christ is the one who not only protects, but the one who provides. That God is the one who shapes us and prunes us and forms us into people that bear fruit. Jeff, can you bring up verse 12 real quick? Thanks. And Christ says, my command is this. He keeps hammering away at it for some reason. It's like, it's like even though this is the simplest lesson we can get, it's the hardest one to learn. And friends, I'm guilty of this too. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Because I think sometimes we find ourselves grafted onto other vines. Or at least maybe we start there. We find ourselves in other streams of living and thinking that sometimes don't produce life. That sometimes put us at odds against one another. And this is where the metaphor breaks down, right? Because you can only take an image so far. But... But sometimes I think it's easy to slip back into those streams. It's easy to fall back into those old habits. And it takes that constant care and love and grace of God to call us back. Or to remind us who we are. Christ says, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. That he should lay down his life. For his friends, Christ is talking about himself. We've talked about this already. But friends, as we go through our lives today, tomorrow, you get it. As we reflect on the ways that God has called us, the, the messages of hope and grace that he continues to speak into our lives, I hope you reflect on these things. Where are you from? Who, who is your family? What, what have you grown up knowing? Because in many ways, that's the stock you came from. That's the root. But also, what are the ways that God is calling you into life? What are the areas of your story, your experience that Christ is offering to heal? What are the ways that Jesus is saying... Hold fast to me because I hold fast to you. Find grace and peace here. Find rest here, but also fruit. Friends, I hope to use another gardening metaphor. I hope this is a good thorn in your side, the, the kind that Paul talks about. The, the kind that spurs you onwards. The kind that calls you back. The, the kind that reminds you that you are a beloved child of God. That you have been grafted on to the true vine. That there is life and life abundant. That the story doesn't end in disappointment or failure. But that we might find the grace of Christ every day. May you wrestle with that. May you reflect on that. And may you know that you are loved by God and that there is abundant life in Christ. Amen. Friends, at this time, it's my favorite part of the month. Do you know that? We have Holy Communion. Friends, at this time, we have Holy Communion. And as a reminder, 
This isn't my table. This isn't the table of the United Methodist Church. This is the table of Christ, the true vine, which we are all connected to. And all people who seek the love of God, who wish to be in the presence of Christ, are welcome here. Friends, if for whatever reason you don't feel like you can take communion today, and it's okay. We'll give you a blessing at the end of it because you are welcome in this community, whoever you are, wherever you're at. But friends, this is holy communion, and all are welcome here. Another quick note before we jump into the liturgy. You all have your cups, don't you? You lift them up real quick. There's two little flaps there. Can you feel them? Don't peel them yet. We're not there yet. There's two little flaps there, one on the top and one on the bottom. You see that? Peel the one on the top first, because if you peel the one on the bottom, you're not going to get to the little wafer. Friends, that being said, would you join us in communion? Shall we pray? Or I guess before we pray, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you that you have formed us from dirt, from dust, from clay, from mud, that you've breathed into us the breath of life that you have made us into living beings, that you have grafted us onto the vine of your son, that you have called us into life from death. Lord, we remember the ways that we have turned from you. We remember the ways that we have transgressed, the debts that we have racked up, the, the ways that we have hurt and harmed each other through sin. But God, thanks be to you, for your son. Thanks be to you for the ways that you have bought us with a price, that you have called us into life, that you have forgiven us of all the ways that we have broken relationship with you, with each other, with ourselves. God, we thank you. We give thanks to know that we are forgiven, that turning back to you is all that is needed, that we are forgiven by your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. So friends, with all of those gathered here or online or those long ago who are in glory now or those yet to come as well, we invite you to raise your voices and join us as we praise the unending name of God, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, blessed are you, and thanks be to you. Amen. Friends, if you recall the night which Christ offered himself up for us, he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you can in my memory. And in the same way, after the meal had ended, he took the cup, he blessed it, he poured the wine and said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you can in my memory. Friends, would you pray with me once more? 
Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you that you are with us, that your presence has never left us, that even before we were aware of it, you were blessing us with your grace. Lord, bless these people here. Bless these simple gifts of bread and cup that they might be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Lord, make us one with you, one with each other, one in ministry to the whole world and one in love until you come again in grace and in glory. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray all of this. Amen. said amen friends may you know that you are loved by God may know, you know that Christ has bought you with the price that you have been redeemed you have been grafted into the vine friends may you be blessed may you know that you are a part of this community wherever you are and may you know that you are loved amen Friends, this would be an excellent time to lift up some prayers of the people. So, I know we've moved some things around. Don't worry. It'll be okay. We've moved some things around, though. If you have any prayers in the sanctuary online, please go ahead, lift them up now, and Deb will lead us in this time. Good morning again. I... Uh... First off, want to lift up the birthdays this week. Um, we have quite a few that are going to happen. Um, Vicki Grummert, um, it's actually today. Arlene Collins, who's here, hers is tomorrow, along with Pastor Luke's is tomorrow. Uh, Amelia Heiser and Dennis Howard, Denny Howard, uh, Brandon Pease, Darby Skiller, and Dave Christensen. Is Dave here today? Um, Avery Baldwin, Randy Daly, Marlene Perry, Parrish Ellis, and my mom, Janet Jones, is going to be next Saturday. So we wish them all a happy birthday this coming week. Now we'll um, look at our prayers. Um, do we have any prayers that I will read off the list that we have on our board over there? Um, Fred Bryson. We'll continue to pray for him. I know he's going to have some surgery on Tuesday, so we wish you the best with that, Fred. Um, Rex and Lou Hickman, and Sue and David Kinney, Karen Gorley, who's now living with her daughter, um, Salary Mueller, I think she's doing pretty good, Brad Cuxhausen, uh, brain tumor, grandson of Sally and Buck Mueller, Mary Thompson, continues to heal with knee and back pain, and, and uh, Mac McNeil with back injury, um, Della Staples, Bob Foster's now home, Chris Anderson, he's going to be having some surgery on May 7th, so we'll keep him there in our prayers. Russ Daly, uh, Randall McDonald, and, and then we continue to pray for all of ours that are in the nursing homes and aren't able to be with us here. Do we have any others? Mary, I know you had someone. Marilyn Smith and you, over in Sydney, was that? Yeah, keep her in our prayers. Anybody else? I have a couple online, Deb. Okay. 
I had Pat Perkins ask for prayers for um, a lady she'd been helping with, Betty. She's had a couple strokes. And then Peggy Manrose asked for her classmate and also went to MYF here, Kent Hoxie that passed away. Kent Hoxie, yes. I remember his folks um, here. So let's pray for each of those that we have named this morning. Our Father, please lift up and help those this, that are going through difficult times right now. Watch over them. May they feel your presence. Wrap your arms around them. Bring healing and wholeness to each one. And lift up those that are having birthdays this week, Lord. May they feel your presence as well and your joy. We just ask this all in your name. Amen. And I think we have one other joy in the congregation. Is that right? <laughs> I think Eric and um, Sarah... They got, did you get married yesterday? Was that right? So, congratulations, guys. I'm so happy for you. Anything else? How about um, announcements? Do you want to do? Are there any announcements? <coughs> going once, going twice. I have, uh... Ad Council. Ad Council meeting 630 tomorrow. tomorrow. Night, downstairs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ad Council meeting 630 tomorrow night downstairs. If you're on that, please be there. Any other announcements? Oh, um, yeah. We are ready to get our winter items out of the mission room. So those of you that have been going through your closets and ready to change out some clothes, um, we are ready for our spring and summer items. So give the uh, give yourself give the office a phone call, <clears throat> and we'll get those items in. Uh, we're ready to change it up. The seasons have switched. If you haven't noticed, so let's switch our clothes. Thank you. <coughs> Any other announcements? All right. Praise team, take it away. May the almighty and gracious God bless you and keep you, lift you up, and give you peace. Friends, may you know the love of Christ in your hearts. May it spill out and be shared with all you meet. May you find grace and hope in the assurance that you are grafted into the vine, that God will continue to bless you and keep you. Go with God, and God will go with you. Amen. Amen. Blessings.